Hello and welcome to this Faros Cloud tutorial. Today we'll be covering permissions in Faros Cloud. While permissions affect what all users can do in a site, typically only site owners will adjust permissions. Granular permissions in Faros Cloud were built to ensure that any type of user can be added to a site and only be allowed to see and edit what the site owner wants them to. Permissions are managed on a per site and per device basis and can be unique for each user in a site. This is a permissions tab for a site. Each user is a column in the permissions table, represented by their initials if the user has accepted their invitation to sign up, or an at symbol followed by the first letter of their email address if they're a new user and haven't yet signed in. Hover over the initials at the top for a full view of the user's name or email address. Users can be hidden from the table here. Full sets of permissions can be copied from one user to another if required. Click Manage Users to select who will be visible in the table. Highlighted users will be shown. The table defaults to five users by alphabetical order. Vertically, the table is split into two high-level sections, the site and then the devices within a site. Permissions are ordered alphabetically within a site and each device. The left-hand side of the screen shows the permissions the user has. On the right-hand side, this user account is signed in, so we'll be able to see the impact of changing permissions as we adjust them in the left view. Some permissions are contained within parent nodes. Clicking expands the control panel permissions to see the view and edit permissions within this node. For site owners, clicking the parent node grants or revokes all permissions within that group. A new user is granted view permissions for all aspects of a site and view permissions for any current devices and future devices. Users may have to grant themselves additional permissions in some circumstances, especially if they're an owner. A user will be granted all but the set permissions permissions for any device they add. Note that only some users can grant and revoke permissions, and this will be covered in more depth later, but the current user profile can set all permissions for this site. Let's start by looking at the owner permission. This is a special permission that bundles a set of permissions together behind the scenes. Any user with this permission is automatically granted all view permissions for a site and all set permissions permissions for a site, meaning they can grant or revoke any user permissions in a site. There must be at least one owner in a site. In some sites, this will be a Faros Cloud admin account. Only Faros Cloud admin accounts or other owner accounts can change the owner permission. Note that while these permissions are granted, they do not visually indicate they are granted in the user's column. The control panel permissions are broken down into two sections, view and edit. It is typical of aspects of cloud permissions to be broken down into these sections. In this case, a user will be able to view the control panel with just the view permission. But with the edit permission, they'll be able to edit its functionality and format, including deleting pages. The device add permission dictates if a user can add a new device to the current site. Please remember that adding new devices to a site could move the site into a different pricing plan. The next permissions pertain to the site itself and are broken down into the user being able to delete a site, edit all attributes of a site, name and settings for example, and if the user can view the site. Here we can see an example of this user being able to adjust the name of the site when granted the edit permission. We'll come back to the set permissions shortly, but the next group of permissions relates to tasks. These allow a user to add tasks, delete tasks, edit a task and its actions, execute or run a task, and finally if a user can see a site's tasks. Next is task schedulers. Permissions set up for a user to add, delete, edit and view schedulers are straightforward. The calendar event view permission will show or hide the event view for a user. Schedule permissions are a subset of the schedulers permissions and are related only to individual schedules and if the user can add, delete, edit and view them. Finally, permissions for if a user can add or invite new users, delete users and view other users in a site. In the example here, we can see how a user is able to be invited when the correct permission is granted. Next, device permissions. Let's open this device so we're ready to interact with it and collapse some of the parent nodes of the site permissions to make viewing our permissions simpler. 
Action Reset allows a user to reset the current device, and Set Beacon allows a user to change the beacon state of the current device. File permissions allow users to interact with files associated with the current device, allowing them to add, delete, transfer, and view them. Here we can see how this user is not able to transfer a file to the device, but is able to delete it. This may not be a typical use case, but is a good example of how powerful granular permissions can be. Device permissions allow for the device itself to be deleted, replaced, or viewed. Replacing a device with a different type could move the site into a different pricing plan. The information permission allows a user to view all read-only information about a device, including timeline and group status, and I.O. modules. The maintenance permission allows a user to see detailed information about a device, including the log and output, and perform maintenance tasks, such as adjust the device's local time. Control permission allows a user to change the lighting output of a device using conventional playback means, triggers being the key example. Within each of these sections are the set permission permissions. These determine which permissions a user can give to other users. Contained in each parent node is a node for each permission available in either the site or device. This is useful when a user who shouldn't have full site control needs to add people who are end users. Note that users with set permissions can't select a parent node. This is only for site owners. That's a summary of permissions in Faros Cloud. Please see other videos in this series for more information about the features of Faros Cloud. Or if you have any other questions, then please feel free to contact cloud at farroscontrols.com.